in um, Hollywood, California, where we uh, and everyone are now exactly four weeks from Election Day. Election Day is a month away here in California. Early voting is already happening. This campaign has been going on since, like, 1985 or something like that. <laughs> and I feel like the candidates are running out of ways to ask us for money. I got a fun fundraising email uh, from Kamala Harris last night. It just said, you up? <laughs> But the Democrats seem to have some momentum, and all Capstan America is feeling the heat. This afternoon, he who will not be named, well, I'll name him later, posted, anybody that cheats on the election is going to jail. Which, <laughs> I agree, for this election and the last one, too. It's, I hope, I would like them... I hope they, they, they silk screen that sentence on the back of his prison jumpsuit. Trump was not in a magnanimous mood today. There's another new tell-all book on the way from legendary journalist Bob Woodward. Trump, as you may recall, hated Woodward's previous three Trump books, so much so he sat for several extensive interviews for those books. <laughs> I think he may have finally learned his lesson with this one because his spokesperson said, Woodward is a total sleazebag who has lost it mentally, and he's slow, lethargic, incompetent, and overall, a boring person with no personality. <laughs> With that said, we are crazy and everything he wrote is true. There are some extra crispy McNuggets in this one, including a few gems from one of Trump's most loyal underlickers, Senator, Senator Lindsey Graham, who said going to Mar-a-Lago is a little bit like going to North Korea and admits that Joe Biden won the election fair and square, but says Trump, quote, doesn't like to hear that. So, well, by all means, entertain his dangerous delusions until we've burned America to the ground then, Lindsay. <laughs> the bigly scoop for Bob Woodward involves Trump's KGBFF. The book says Trump has spoken to Vladimir Putin seven times since he left office, which is less than Ivanka, but more than Tiffany. It's right in the <laughs> daughter sweet spot. Trump once made a senior aide leave the room so he could have a private call with Putin, which... Hello, Donald, what are you wearing? I'm... <laughs> Shirtless on my horse again. <laughs> and this is quite a detail. During the height of the pandemic, right around the time Trump was trying to get us to stop testing for COVID because the high numbers were making him look bad, Agent Orange secretly sent his buddy Vlad a shipment of hard-to-get COVID testing machines for his personal use. You wouldn't want one of the most villainous murderers on the planet to get a cough, would you? But Bob Woodward reported that Putin said, he said, please don't tell anybody you sent these to me. Trump said, I don't care, fine. And Putin said, I don't want you to tell anybody because people will get mad at you, not me. They don't care about me. And you know you, know you are too bright when Vladimir Putin has to help you with PR. <laughs> but can you imagine? I mean, nurses, doctors, American hospitals couldn't get these machines. He's sending them to the devil himself. And by the way, he didn't pay for that. We paid for that thing he sent. I don't want to say Trump was his puppet, but whenever they're in a room together, you never saw more than one of Putin's hands. Okay? <laughs> the book has some stories about our current president, too. Joe Biden, in private, refers to Trump as that effing a-hole, <laughs> which tracks. Of Bibi Netanyahu, Biden said, that son of a bitch, he's a bad guy, he's a bad effing guy. And he referred to Trump's COVID buddy as that effing Putin. I don't know why Joe Biden only curses behind closed doors. You're on your way out. Start doing press conferences like, <laughs> like Richard Pryor on the Sunset Strip. I mean, it's Joe time at the Apollo. Have some fun already. <laughs> the book comes out on Tuesday, but they released uh, the cover art already, and you can see it was lovingly designed by a guy with a free 30-day trial to Photoshop. <laughs> And then we have the other big Trump book. Uh, Melania's <laughs> memoir came out today. It's called Melania. It's named after her. Uh, <laughs> proceeds from sales of the book are going to one of Melania's favorite charities, Body Doubles for Conjugal Visits. Very good book. <laughs> right now, it's book, the book is ranked number 17 on Amazon. And despite the fact that it just came out, even has reviews. Here's one of the reviews. Jay Love gives it five stars, says, wonderful, this was the best book I've ever read. <laughs> Which is a nice way of saying I've never read another book. 
Melania shares some of her very be be best anecdotes in the book. There's a passage about her, uh, that time in 2019 where her husband called her in to watch a classified military operation, even though she didn't have security clearance. Only Donald Trump would call his wife in to watch a top secret mission like it was a TikTok of a baby hippo or something. <laughs> Melania claims she didn't condemn the violence on January 6th because she was busy going over White House renovations that day and didn't know it happened. And probably the most stunning revelation in the book is that Trump told her that Don Jr. was bred specifically for his organs. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> I made that one up. That one was not true. But the fact that, wow. The fact that you believe it really says something about either you or him, I'm not sure. <laughs> Melania also went into detail about her favorite moment as First Lady. People always asking me, what was your favorite memory as First Lady? It was in 2020 when Donald got the China virus and he was airlifted to hospital like sick elephant. <laughs> Byron and I threw party on back lawn. We danced around giant bonfire and shot fire cookers at Mike Pence. I had the Lincoln bedroom all to myself and did not sleep wink. Too many smiling. Sadly, the elephant make it. Yeah, it's humpy, humpy time. Oh. Elephant find me. When is he going to change? You know what? There's still a spark between them. That's very sweet. I will say that I was reading some of the reviews of the book, and they are not excellent. Vanity Fair says Melania Trump's new book is truly bad. But what these reviewers don't realize is that it's not just a, a book. It is this. It's also a fragrance. <laughs> Smells like Slovenian prenup ink. Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> you can take that home. Meanwhile, a uh, scary and powerful hurricane is barreling towards Florida right now. Hurricane Milton is at category five out of five, which is something even the experts, even the people who know everything there is to know about hurricanes have not heard of. I would like to tell you that there's a very violent hurricane that's coming down the line. And it's a Category 5, which is something that I've never heard a Category 5 actually coming onto land, but it looks like it's going to. No, you never heard of a Category 5 coming onto land. It's just interesting because I was under the impression that you had. I saw the devastating effects of that Category 5 hurricane. Category 5. Never heard about Category 5s before. It was a Category 5. I never even knew a Category 5 existed. A Category 5. Nobody's ever heard of a five hitting land. Usually by that time, it's dissipated. This was almost coming in at a five. It was a five a little bit out offshore. I don't know that we've ever seen that. The category five is something that uh, I don't know that I've ever even heard the term. Uh, he, you know, he did get his meteorology degree from Trump University. There was a Category 5 hurricane in Florida while Trump was president. He was probably busy with Kanye during that one. <laughs> Trump did a Fox News Q&A with Laura Ingram last night, where he again showed that he is always, always, always wrong. That was a horrific storm, much worse. And, you know, it's late in the season. You wouldn't think a thing like that could happen. Yeah, no, it's not late in the season. <laughs> Hurricane season goes until the end of November. He said this about Hurricane Helene, too. The guy lives in Florida. He doesn't know when hurricanes happen. <laughs> but it doesn't matter when they happen. What matters is why they happen. And the answer to why is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Only Donald Trump sees a natural disaster coming and goes, hmm, who can I blame for this? Even Laura Ingram wasn't buying this load of crap. They don't have the people. They're not doing it. It's a bad, it's a very bad thing. This How is would you Katrina. do it differently? I'd have a tremendous team of people here. They don't have any people. Florida was hit very hard. Biden said the response has been robust and well-coordinated, Mr. President. Nobody says that. He doesn't know, well, that's what, what, President he doesn't Biden know said. what robust is. He should be there, and she should be there. She shouldn't be at fundraisers. And she she was there today there. for three hours, I believe, uh, Kamala Harris. Well, robust, I guess. <laughs> what? 
Laura's in trouble. Laura just lost her, her cabinet position as secretary of McGriddles. The response has been so bad to the hurricane. They have, this response has been horrific. But didn't it's, Elon praise Pete been... Buttigieg saying he cleared the way for some of Only, my helicopters yeah, yeah. to come in? Oh. He, he, he praised Buttigieg. Well, that was two days late yeah. because what happened is he sent his uh, great, you know, gadgets in. He has the one most, uh, the Starlinks. And then they sent it in, and they, they wouldn't allow it to go in. It took two days. And then Boot Edge Edge, as you say, Boot Edge Edge, uh, <laughs> called. And I guess uh, after two days late, though. Yeah. When in doubt, mispronounce Buttigieg. That's how you do it. <laughs> 78 years old, still sounding out his words. And then we have <laughs> Captain Jerk of Starlink himself, Elon Musk, who yucked it up with fellow vomit troll Tucker Carlson. I, I, made, a, I made a joke, which I realized I, I deleted. Um, which is like, nobody's even bothering to try to kill Kamala, because it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you achieve? Nothing. No, it's it's totally right. another puppet. Exactly. That's... <laughs> it's no point in killing... It's deep and true, though. Nobody's trying to kill Joe Biden. It's in... It would oh, be pointless. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I was like, doesn't it seem strange that no one's even bothered <laughs> to try? Hilarious. Just two sociopaths laughing it up about who's worthy of being assassinated or not. Not weird at all. And likable. So likable. Are we sure they're not AI? You know, they, we keep hearing AI is going to kill us. I, it might be those two. Here in California, our governor, Gavin Newsom, signed a bill that makes California the first state to ban Fruit Loops in school cafeterias. Fruit Loops. Uh, the cereal contains additives and dyes that have been linked to hyperactivity and ADHD and um, Stop all this. Spouting nonsense at once! Mr. Jimmy Kimmel! Oh, it's Toucan Sam, everybody. Wow, what a pleasure. You know, we were just talking about Governor Newsom banning Fruit Loops in schools. Governor Newsom should keep his beak out of other people's business. <laughs> banning Fruit Loops in schools. What's he gonna ban next? Knives? Yeah, I think knives are already banned in schools. Yeah, I think that's... They yeah. are? Yeah. Well, how would kids protect themselves against Italians? Well, that's very offensive, and I think you're very drunk. Uh, how dare you! I'm not drunk! Okay, all right. <laughs> I am part of a healthy breakfast. Yeah. I help children start their day with fruits. Oh, uh, yeah, what fruits? How you know? What? <laughs> Man, that's okay. What fruits are in Fruit Loops? Well, there's orange. Uh -huh. And there's red and purple. Yeah, red, red and purple aren't fruits. Which is why we spell fruits with two O's. <laughs> you doughy douchebag. And that, well, and that's not very nice. And you know, I love Fruit Loops, so I, I, I'm not. You do? Yeah, I do. <laughs> why? <laughs> why are they doing this to know. me? <laughs> why are they doing this to us? Guillermo, <laughs> could you please escort him out? And oh, a little don't bother. Ride. I'm flying south for the winter to Venezuela. Oh, are you from Venezuela? <laughs> no, no. That's where they don't have an extradition treaty. <laughs> Let's just say I also followed my nose to 10 or 12 freak-offs at Diddy's house. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Guillermo, it's time for... Oh. Yes, toucan. Thing. Thank you, Sam. Take so it much. from me, kids! <laughs> Don't film your freak-offs! All right. I'm a dirty bird! All right. Put on down.